One, two, three, four, five. Alright. <coughs> we forgot to bring this back. <coughs> bring this back up. Alright. So. Alright. <coughs> Excuse me. So this will be Dreaming Tree Part 3. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Sarah Tower 11s. While we tighten our seat, which is too loose. Whoa, <laughs> it's looser than I thought. All right. So the Sarah Tower 11s, when I was playing to the song, I figured out how I like to like do it. So the way that I like to do it is I don't do it from, uh, from the starting point position because then it's like 11 times 4 right 44 hits have to go before it's done and i mean i practice that and it sounds cool but it it sounds forced versus this way which doesn't take away that many many notes but it does a big difference so um, instead of going right I start it one, right? I start it there, not so we sub we subtract like 11, 12 notes essentially, right? So then we go, right? Right? Because it because we had wait eleven right, but now we're starting here. those notes really helps it make more uh, sense or be more approachable within the song and not just like the full exercise but more the application after having perfected you know it so like 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 that you know and uh it makes more sense than than trying to start it off there and keep it going the whole way excuse me Let's talk a bit about that Sarah Tower 11 and the variations therein. So don't start with 11, start with 3 and then 5. Right. And then you got five.
so that's cool to practice and then the other thing that i wanted to talk about was uh what would klaus hessler do he would do a collapsed version of the fi double final of seven and it <laughs> So it inverts by itself. It's not the same. It's not that. It's nice.
right? So there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Just turn on that. The next thing I want to talk about is something that I discovered while I was doing the last one and I kind of kept it to myself so I could think about it for a little second more. So, um, yeah. I want to talk about the blush dot. But um, deconstructing it, like, as in, you know, like how you would see food, like a, a deconstructed spaghetti or this, you know, and it will have like a tomato and like a piece of basil and some pasta and this and that and all of the things separated and cooked and then like, you know, it's deconstructed, but all the pieces are still there. So... <laughs> As you see, it's kind of a looser concept. <laughs> it's a system where we're only using the blesta. But there's different things that we can do with it, right? So sometimes we're doing a, a kind of triplet slow down. With like a little pause. Uh, you know, trip. Ta -da -da -da, you know. Sometimes we're doing it faster, you know, sometimes we're doing it really slower, like, no, sometimes we're leaving a bigger space, but it's still the, the, like, right rate, you know, and so on, and so on, so we're only using the blusta, and we're trying to deconstruct it into creating cool hi-hat things that sound busy, and yet the opposite of busy, you know, so that we can sound like we're overplaying and not at the same time, which is what Carter is really known for, right? <laughs> it's overplaying, but in such a musical way where every hit is one of the bandmates is also doing that hit and so on and so on. And insane sync, 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 syncopation. And I mean, we can all get there. It's all putting hours into those things, you know? So it, that's a cool one too, especially when you mix that with other things and start to create like a really abstract change and then bring it back, you know? <laughs>
right, so that's... kind of playing the triplet in between which you can do against any two notes it doesn't have to be a diddle it can be right there is no difference Deaf, that's hard to hear. I guess because uh, we're mixing para diddle diddle I mean para para diddle and para para diddle seven right thirteen <laughs>
9, which is easier than I thought. Like that deconstruction of blush dust stuff is risky, but when and when it works, it sounds epic. I think Nick would do that with a lot of hi hat stuff to make it work. of work dreaming tree and sweating you can play these songs for the rest of your life and continue to add better and better things and that's what really drumming is about you know it's not about some kind of concrete jungle it it has to be alive it has to be org organic you know growing with 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 you you know <laughs>
Asta and the Sarah Tower at the same time. Right? So we're doing that. And then instead of going to the left, we just keep the double going at at that bluster drag speed. And we're gonna per and we pretend that that slam is right. thing the easier it becomes when you stay in like quin quince it's a bit hard it's tough but when you when you go six seven eight it becomes much simpler and it sounds better but it's still good to have them all down Like 
like in 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 quince it's like ooh, <laughs> it's still cool you know and inside the song obviously it becomes a little sim 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 simpler we have time you know or if you're playing to a click it's the same thing you start to have time when like you're doing this to not to nothing it's great practice for your like internal time but since you're always shifting like it it's not as good as when you're playing it to the song but it's still important to do it just to see where your own time is without the the the, the song minus the drums right <laughs>
du weiterhin. So let's try to mod up that Klaus Hessler thing. That actually works good. It, it works fast. It seems to have a gospel type feel to it. Who would have known? Adding like the the like Drew groove there. We can even add a song go, I guess, even in seven. tried that before. <laughs> gospel stuff of eric moore and forrest rice and blah blah it's all based off of the template of the drew groove feel and you just do other variations you just keep going and if you do that it will sound the gospel way i saw klaus hessler recently teach it i think because he saw it in my harmonic time playlist like um like it's really key to having that black swagger or the black church swagger is what I like should say, you know, like that whole festive praise vibe of uh, praying with exuberance and not silence and contemplation, but more exclamation, right? To exclaim things. That's why it's such a, a vocal drumming style because it's exclamative. <laughs> 